So we discussed the considerations in treating recurrent disease. We've discussed the role of surgery. Clearly, chemotherapy plays a major role in treating recurrent ovarian cancer. Um, we now have bevacizumab approved with five chemotherapy backbones, mm -hmm. uh, three in platinum-resistant disease, two in platinum-sensitive disease. Have these approvals, Katie, changed your practice? Or were you like Matt in the secondary debulking idea? Well, I, 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 was, I was right already, and these guys confirmed <laughs> that I was right. Uh, and, and, and it's weird that you don't have to go through the same sort of authorization for a secondary to bulk Not at all. that she has to go through to get bevacizumab. Absolutely. Even though surgery is probably as expensive or more. It's interesting, right? So has, has the approvals of Bev changed your practice? I think it's definitely changed, it's definitely changed my practice. Um, and, and I think, again, I'm still evolving. I, I, we now have maintenance drugs approved. We did not have maintenance drugs approved before. And so I think the standard of care was observation. You get to complete response, observation. You get a good partial response, maybe observation, maybe I just keep the carboplatin going in, you know, indefinitely. Now I have maintenance options, and so I'm counseling patients bet better. I think because we have the studies and we've looked back at our history, personally I have a better understanding of this population and they don't do as well. They don't last as long off therapy as I think we think that they do. And Which so maintenance, patients don't last? Platinum sensitive, get a response. Right take them off study, of course you're gonna have your outliers, but for the most part, they recur not two years later, not Five one year later. So, <laughs> you know, I look at that and I'm like, well, maintenance makes more sense than that. So I think I've changed my tune on that. So let me summarize, so, so the platinum sensitive approval includes bevacizumab with chemotherapy and then bevacizumab maintenance. Right, and we have an approval for neuripirib. Right, in that same setting. In a setting. switch, in that same setting. And so now we have two drugs and I have a patient in front of me and, and I don't have good data on how to pick. So now sequencing. we kind of get into the sequencing question and what do I use right. first? And it comes down to the residual toxicities, what's her molecular profile, even though neuriprobe does not require presence of HRD, I think it does tell us who's gonna respond better versus bevacizumab, which has an overall survival advantage. So, so Matt, what do you pick? So Matt, what's hard? the role of bevacizumab in your practice? Well, I would tell you that 213 changed things for me. Um, so tell us what 213 is, or Rob, you're the PI. Yeah. Let, let's have him Maybe, tell us yeah, what it that'd is. That'd be hard for me to write in front of the expert. <laughs> and then, tell us what 213 is, and then Matt, you tell us what the role is of bevacizumab in your practice. Okay, so, so GOG-213 is a randomized trial that has two primary endpoints. The first is whether or not bevacizumab added to chemotherapy improves overall survival. And the second is whether or not surgery improves overall survival right. in the context of chemotherapy. How big is that trial? So, it's, that so for the chemotherapy, the first objective, one that was just re, uh, published and reported, was the chemotherapy objective of 674 patients. Randomized equally between paclitaxel carboplatinum was the only chemotherapy we allowed in the trial versus paclitaxel carboplatinum BEV followed by BEV maintenance to progression. So um, um, the trial, um, you know, it was primary endpoint was overall survival. It showed a hazard ratio of about 0 0.83, 82 to 83, uh, for uh, improvement in overall survival on the median of about five months. Five months, I love it. Yeah. And, um, and then, in, in, of course, the other secondary endpoints, such as PFS, were ex was extended. Response rate was, ex was extended. Response rate's 75%? Yeah. And I think even more importantly, the, the complete response rate was doubled. Right. So that increases the overall response rate by 20% yeah. and then doubles the CR rate. Right. Right, and and you know, and, and then importantly, of course, because many patients were on these these uh, therapies for long periods of time, was that the safety signal was very similar to what we had seen right. well with ICON right. seven and two eighteen. So no new safety signals. So Matt, there's two there's two opinions. Some people say I love bevacizumab, platinum sensitive relapse. I'm going to use it. I'm going to give a maintenance phase. I'm going to prolong OS maybe for five months. Definitely increase the response rate by twenty percent. That's one thought. The other thought is, I'm going to save it till she really needs it. When she has ascites, <laughs> she has platinum-resistant disease, it's going to be fewer cycles, I'm going to save President Trump's presidency, <laughs> save money. The other one is, look, the incremental benefit of bevacizumab is trivial, it's too expensive and too toxic, I'm never going to use it. Where do you put bevacizumab? Again, had it not affected overall survival, in the U.S., this this study was done in the U.S. where we could have we given did it. where we, we gave bevacizumab later in probably the vast majority of patients that were in the control arm. Right. A, third. So, a third, a third crossed over. So the strategy that you're saying to me, I can't I can't fix that by giving that chemo later. They're not going to get that survival benefit. It looks to me. 
there's some unique interaction between tax hall and deficits we have in my mind. That's what I think. That it's, it's, it, there is more to the story than we completely understand. If you look at Aurelia, the taxing, Bev Arm, very exciting. But moving things more forward to 213, I think really changes, you know, we're not using the AGO regimen. We're not using the Calypso regimen yeah, nearly right. as much. Carbo with, PLD, yeah. Um, and, and going back to tax hall, which, you know, Obviously, that means some hair loss, and that means neuropathy for the patients. But I think if you can show survival benefit, where actually patients are living longer. So that's would, a great don't, summary. Don't, don't you think a, a way around that would be to do correlative studies and look whether there are specific subsets that really had yeah. the greatest impact Absolutely. on that? Absolutely. And that, uh, and that's you know, we're not, we're not, not we're each ovarian cancer is the totally same. Totally working on so, it. Yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right.